Good evening everybody. I'd like to do a talk today on the Quran and the Bible compared. And I have this article here and it's got some great points in it which I'm about to read out now. Okay. I'd just like to say the Quran. The Muslims believe that the Quran was gradually revealed from Allah to Muhammad verbally through the angel Gabriel over a period of approximately 23 years, beginning in 610 AD, when Muhammad was 40, and it concluded in 632 AD, the year of his death. Importantly, according to the Quran, the Bible is the inspired word of God, and Muslims are commanded to believe in the Bible, Surah 289, Surah 136, Surah 413, Surah 4136, Surah 4, 150 and 152, Surah 22, sorry, Surah 32, 24. Now the Quran clearly states that no one can change God's word. So for Muslims, this is a fatal contradiction, as we'll soon discover. The words of the Lord, the Bible, are perfect in truth and justice. There is none who can change his words. He both heareth and knoweth. Surah 6, 114-115 I've got the Quran here, so I'll read the reference And it says, Surah 6, 114-115 Then is it other than Allah I should seek as judge While it is he who has revealed to you the book, the Quran Explained in detail And those to whom we previously gave the scripture Know that it is sent down from your Lord in truth so never be among the doubters. And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can alter his words. And he is the hearing, the knowing. Okay. Now then. According to the Bible. It alone is the word of God. The Bible is complete. Any new revelation, such as the Quran, is condemned. I'll read Deuteronomy to be Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 to back that up. It says, You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandment of the Lord your God which I command you. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Proverbs 30 verses 5 to 6. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 Contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints Jude 1 verse 3 For I testify to anyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book If anyone adds to these things God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy God shall take away his part from the book of life Revelation 22 verses 18 to 19. Now because the Bible states that new revelation such as the Quran is to be rejected, then either the Bible is wrong or the Quran is wrong. They cannot both be God's word. Okay. So, is the Quran God's word? The Quran has no specific fulfilled prophecies only generalizations regarding the day of judgment surah 77 verses 6 to 12 so let's look at the historical evidence regarding the quran there is no evidence that allah directed history or that the quran anticipated for future events in fact the quran has numerous errors regarding history scientific evidence no true scientific foreknowledge in the Quran and many mistakes. Archaeology. Excavations refute and contradict many claims in the Quran. Power over death. There is no evidence that Allah or Muhammad had supernatural power or power over death. So let's look let's look at some of the errors and contradictions in the Quran. Okay. The Quran claims that it is a continuation of the Bible and it will not contradict it.
Therefore, any verifiable contradiction is enough to prove the Quran is not the inspired word of God. I'm going to read Surah 2, 136. We believe in God and in what have been revealed unto us and in that which have been revealed unto Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes and in what have been given unto Moses and Jesus and that which has been given unto the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and unto him we are resigned. I'll give you an example of an error in the Quran. According to Surah 41, verses 9 to 12, it took Allah eight days to create the world. Yet Surah 71 and Surah 10, verse 3, agree with the Bible, which states that God created the world in six days. Genesis 1, 31, Exodus 20, verse 11. In Surah 11, 44, the Quran claims Noah's Ark came to rest on top of Mount Judai when the Bible says Mount Arafat. Genesis 8 verse 4. Nimrod. The Quran claims Nimrod threw Abraham into a fire. Surah 21, 68 to 69 and Surah 9, 69. This serious error contradicts the Bible and history. Nimrod lived many centuries before Abraham. Nimrod was long dead when Abraham was born. Look at Genesis 10, verse 8 to 9. Genesis 11, 19 to 26. The flood story in the Quran. The Quran indicates Noah's flood took place in Abraham's day. Compare it to Surah 759 with Surah 7136. This is a historical impossibility. Genesis 9, 28 to 29, Genesis 11, 10 to 26. Haman and Babel. The Quran says that Haman lived in Egypt during the time of Moses and worked for Pharaoh building the Tower of Babel. Surah 28, 38, Surah 29, 39, Surah 40, 23 to 24, 36 and 37. But Haman actually lived many centuries later in Persia and was in the service of King Ahasuerus, according to the book of Esther. This again reveals the Quran contradicts both the Bible and secular history, proving the Quran is not the word of God. Crucifixion. The Quran indicates that crucifixion was used by Pharaoh, Surah 7, 1, 2, 4, though history reveals it was not invented until many centuries later. Mary or Miriam. Muhammad confused Mary, the mother of Jesus, with Miriam, the sister of Moses, and Aaron. Surah 19.28 This is a very serious error as it reveals that Muhammad and his followers had no understanding of the different time periods for biblical figures. Miriam lived 1500 years before Mary. Mary's Miracles Muhammad clearly made up fraudulent speeches and miracles for Mary, Surah 19.23-26. Fictional speeches. Muhammad made up fictional speeches using words that did not exist at the time of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, Moses, Mary, Jesus, etc. I'll give you an example. Muhammad quotes several Bible characters using the word Muslim and Islam. Yet these words did not even exist until hundreds and even thousands of years later. I'll give you the surahs. Surah 2, 60. Surah 2, 126 to 128. Surah 2, 132 to 133. Surah 2, 260. Surah 3, 49 to 52. And 67, Surah 6, 74 to 82, Surah 7, 59 to 63, and Surah 7, 120 to 126, Surah 10, 71 to 72, Surah 18, 60 to 70, Surah 19, 16 to 33. Now, in Surah 105, it claims in the Quran that the elephant army of Abraham was defeated by birds dropping stones of bait clay upon them. But according to the historical record, 
Abraham's army withdrew their attack on Mecca after smallpox broke out among the troops. In Surah 20, 87-95, we are told that the Jews made the golden calf in the wilderness at the suggestion of the Samaritan. Yet Samaria did not exist until many centuries after the golden calf incident. Exodus 32 and 1 Kings. So I've just give you a few mistakes there and errors that are clearly in the Quran. Okay. I'll give you another one. Abraham or Moses. The Quran states that Abraham was the first to believe. Surah 6, 14. It then turns around and says Moses was the first to believe. Surah 7, 1, 4, 3. Many stories in the Quran were well-known fables and folklore before they were written by Muhammad. For example, the story of the she-camel who leapt out of a rock and became a prophet was known long before Muhammad. The Quran reports that an entire village of people were turned into apes because they broke the Sabbath by fishing. Surah 265, Surah 7, 163 to 6, 166. This legend precedes Muhammad and his followers who apparently plagiarised it. So the Quran rejects and contradicts the Bible's clear teachings concerning Jesus. The Quran states that Jesus was not the Son of God. Surah 575, Surah 9 verse 30. Jesus did not die for our sins, Surah 519. He was not crucified, Surah 4157. He was not divine as well as human, Surah 575. The Bible repeatedly states that Jesus is the Son of God who died for our sins, John 20, 31, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. So, If you read the Quran carefully, you will see it contains much Arabian folklore and unbiblical teachings. Muhammad interacted with Jews, Christians and Catholics. Therefore, it is no surprise that many of the teachings in the Quran are similar to those taught in the Bible. And several appear to be copied right from the Bible. Remember this point, the Holy Bible was complete six centuries before the Quran came about. The Quran has no beginning or ending. The Bible alone begins with the creation account, it explains man's fall into sin, then it explains God's promise to send a saviour and concludes with Jesus Christ's return. The end of all evil and the curse and a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwells everlasting righteousness, peace and joy for those who trust the Lord. And as we might expect, only God's word explains the origin of sin and death, the origin of our conscience. God's plan to redeem those who trust Jesus and God's great love for every person. In fact, the Bible alone explains the origin of everything and the consummation of everything. Furthermore, the Quran has no saviour or plan of salvation. In contrast, the Old Testament, written before Christ, declares many prophecies pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ's first coming. And the New Testament is all about our salvation in Jesus, the one who fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies and fulfilled the law perfectly. Jesus summarised God's grand plan with these words, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 The Quran contains no prophecy. In contrast, as we will document, the Bible contains scores of specific prophecies proving that it is in the inspired, the inspired word of our Creator. The Quran portrays Allah as a sovereign dictator who is capricious and unknowable. And though the Quran states that Allah is merciful, it does not teach that he is our loving father. The Bible teaches that God is intimate and personal, a perfect father who loves us. God is also righteous and holy and therefore hates wickedness and sin. Therefore, because God knew before he created man that man would sin, he had a plan in place to send his only son and sinless son to the earth to live a perfect life, to suffer and die for every person's sins. Jesus alone died for our sins and rose from the dead. All who repent and trust Jesus will receive forgiveness and eternal life and will spend eternity with our Father in heaven. Okay. So, in summary, we can see that the Bible is the Word of God. The Bible has accurately predicted the rise and fall of many ancient kingdoms. The Bible has foretold specific earth-shaking and history-making events which were fulfilled literally. 
The Bible has predicted the entire history of Israel in intimate detail and to date, the word of God has proven itself faithful and true. The Bible anticipated the Messiah with scores of prophecy references, all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. We begin with the Messianic prophecies. Wow. So here's a few Messianic prophecies in the Old Testament. Genesis 3 verse 15 says the seed of a woman. So this is the virgin birth anticipated. The seed of the woman is the Messiah. And it was fulfilled. We see a fulfillment of that in Galatians 4 verse 4. Genesis, sorry, Genesis 12 verse 3 says he would be the seed of Abraham. Fulfilled in Matthew 1 verse 1. Genesis 49 10 says from the tribe of Judah the Messiah would come. That's fulfilled in Luke 3 33. Micah 5 2 the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Fulfilled in Matthew 2 verse 1. Jeremiah 31 15 Herod would kill the children. Fulfilled in Matthew 2 16. Isaiah 40 verse 3, the Messiah would be preceded by a messenger, which is John the Baptist. Matthew 3 verses 1 to 2. Psalm 2 verse 7, Son of God. Matthew 3 17, the, prof the fulfilment of that prophecy. Deuteronomy 18 15, Jesus would be a prophet. Fulfilled in Luke 1 76, Acts 3 20 to 22. Isaiah 61, 1 to 2, he would heal the brokenhearted. Fulfilled in Luke 4, 18 to 19. Psalm 35, 19, hated without a cause. Fulfilled in John 15, 24 to 25. Daniel 9, 25, the exact date of Jesus' triumphal entry. I've got, I've, I've got a work on Daniel, which I've got here, and I can do that in another video. But fulfilled in Mark 11, 7, 9 to 11. Psalm 41, 9, he was betrayed by a friend. Fulfilled in Luke 22, 47. And there's many more I can go through, but there's just a few. There's many, many more. Okay. So, this only represents a few dozen of the over 300 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. It's impossible for one man to fulfill all of these prophecies by chance to illustrate. Let's calculate the odds of just eight of these prophecies being fulfilled in any one person. What's the chance that a man will be born in the tiny, the tiny, t tiny town of Bethlehem in Micah 5 verse 2? Scholars have estimated that during the days of Jesus, the chance would be one in 200,000. How many kings have entered their city on a donkey? Zechariah 9 verse 9. Let's be very conservative and say one in 100. How many people have been denied by a friend for 30 pieces of silver? Zechariah 11 verse 12. Certainly less than one in one thousand. How often is betrayal money used to buy a potter's field? Zechariah eleven thirteen. Probably none other than Jesus, but let's say one in one hundred thousand. Okay. So there you have it folks. The evidence for the Bible is overwhelming. Okay. There's zero prophecy in the Quran, zero evidence for its reliability. And the zero witnesses to any of the stuff that Muhammad claimed to do. For example, the night journey and also the splitting the moon into no witnesses at all. So the Bible is the most trustworthy source because at the end of the day, the Bible was written before the Quran. The Quran was written 600 years later, 600 miles away by one man claiming to be a prophet so the onus of proof is not on the bible to prove itself which it can do by the way the onus of proof is on the quran because it came 600 years later making new claims which cannot be verified so it's the old that tests the new not the new that tests the old so muslims it's up to you to prove your quran we, historians would not use the quran as a source to explain the things about Jesus, the time of the Jews and the Messiah. They would look at earlier historical data, which is abundant, is abundant. We cannot rely on the Quran. It is not of God's word. The Bible is the word of God. Question I'm going to ask now is where will you spend eternity? Are you going to spend it with Jesus Christ in heaven, living in peace? 
Or are you going to put your trust in one person who contradicts every single prophet in the Old and New Testament? Contradicts everything that is written in the Bible. And you're going to put your trust in that. I would think very seriously about that question. Because one day you will stand before a holy God. A holy God that hates sin. Hamza said that Christianity solves a problem that doesn't exist or tries to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Example, the problem of sin. Hamza said, well, why don't God, why don't we just say, God, forgive me and it's done. We don't need someone to die. That was his premise. Let me tell you this. God hates sin. Sin is detestable to God. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. OK, now let's put Hamza's argument to the test. Let's say the Bible says that God is a judge and he's going to judge people. OK, the Quran believes the same thing. that God will judge. There's going to be a day of judgment, right? If you break God's law, you can go up to God and say, you know what, God, I broke your law. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And God will turn around and says, I already have forgiven you. I sent you my son to pay for your sins. Now, because he's a good judge, he has to judge sin. And he's not just going to say, oh, forget about it. Don't worry about it. Your sins are forgiven. He forgave us at the cross, my friends. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Now, if you go to a judge in today's society and you break the law, you can say sorry all you want and say, oh, please, I'm a good person. I've done this. I've done that. But I, him being a good judge still has to judge you according to the law. He can't just sweep your crime under the carpet and let you go. He has to judge according to the law. And that's what God will do on the last day. If you've not accepted his righteousness, which is Jesus Christ, then you will have to pay for your own sin. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of salvation is eternal life in Jesus Christ. You cannot earn your salvation. And you, see, you cannot atone for your own sins. God made that atonement. John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed. He has reconciled us back to the Father in one body by the cross. He is our mediator. He is the propitiation for our sins. Muslims, you cannot pay for your sins. You cannot do good deeds to get into heaven. You cannot. God has made a way. You either come in on his terms or you come on your own. I urge you now to seek the truth while it may be. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And come off this religious road of Islam and come to the one true saviour of all mankind. Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords. The Bible says that every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You will bow the knee to Jesus Christ. If you don't bow the knee while you're alive, you'll bow the knee when you meet him at the end of your life. So think carefully. Thank you. God bless.